consider yourselves to be Wiccans or know anything about the Wicca religion? Well, some of you might because of the popular increase of Wiccans. And according to Dan Kurtz, in 2014, 1.5 million people identified themselves as Wiccan, which was a huge rise compared to 2008, which is only 30,000 Wiccans. Hi, my name is Lucia Mendez, and this is my partner, Riley Potter. And today we will be talking about Wicca using using credible resources that we have collected. Today I will be talking about what Wicca is and the history of it. So before we can go into the history of Wicca, we first must go into what Wicca is. Wicca is a modern day nature day based paganism, which is also based on witchcraft and based on pre-Christian religion. They use ancient practices such as spells, rituals, and herbalism, and can be practiced in a group or individually. Individually, Wiccans might call themselves witches, and in a group, they might call themselves a coven. Wicca is an umbrella term because there are many types of witches and there are many different branches of the religion. Satanism is a part of a branch of Wicca, and there are witches that consider themselves to be crystal or cosmic witches, and many more. But what do they mainly believe? Because so many Wiccans, because there are so many Wiccans and they have all different traditions and rituals, it's hard to know what they all mainly believe. And according to Ethan Dole, the absence of any single religious text and no main leader is the reason why there's such a diverse types of Wiccans. But they all mainly believe in a personified god or goddess. Some may call it Mother Earth and Father Sky, and others may call it the Horn God and Goddess. It's a polyethic religion, meaning that they believe in many gods and goddesses. Wiccans also use nature in their daily day basis. According to Alexander Pat Home. They believe in the divinity of nature, and with nature they use it in their spells and rituals. There's a misconception that Wiccans are evil because of the portrayal of media and the use of pentagons that they have. But it's a very peaceful and loving religion, and they believe in harming none and doing as you will. Many Wiccans consider themselves to be environmentalists, feminism, feminists, and activists. So now we can go into the history of Wicca. Wicca has a deep and rich history and comes from the polyethic religion in Europe known as paganism. Pagans use folklore, witchcraft, and ritual magic, and traditions like seasonal celebrations, plant healings, and other practices, according to Jennifer Crowell, and which is still used in modern day Wicca. During the spread of Christianity, many witches were killed and massacred, as many of us know, because of the Salem witchcraft trials. So the religion was pushed into the dark. Christians also took over pagan holidays like Christmas, as many of us know, which was originally called Santa Lia and was a Wiccan or a pagan holiday, also celebrated for giving gifts and for being joyful and nice. So, how has modern day Wicca come to be? All thanks to the founder Bill Gardner. He was born in 1884 and joined the coven in 1930 in a group that practiced magic in a diverted way slightly from paganism, according to Emily Pinkowitz. He wrote a book called The Book of Shadows, which contains spells, rituals, practices, and traditions, which was a fundamental tool for covens throughout England and the U.S. This book popularized Wicca and, made, and pushed it into a positive light, which was read by many people. Now my partner will go into the practices and beliefs of Wicca. Uh, was I for understanding of the like history of Wicca, I'd like to delve a little bit deeper into the beliefs and practices of the, the movement. Uh, like my partner said, uh, it's a very highly decentralized movement. It doesn't have like a central leader or religious text, uh, but there are a couple of things that are common to like most or even just like a large number of people. Uh, among these are The Wiccan Read. It's a poem which was written like a long time ago, um, but it was adapted and it's been changed a lot. And mainly the only thing that people really like remember of it um, is like the that one line there. It's probably the most important line uh, to most uh, Wiccans. Again, as my partner mentioned, and at hard none, do as ye will. Uh, and also it contains another very important belief, uh, which is common to generally like a good portion of Wiccans. I'm saying generally a lot here because again, very decentralized. Um, it's the threefold law or the rule of three. 
mention here in the wake and read. Uh, essentially, the concept is any energy you send out into the universe, it will come back to you threefold. So if you do something good, uh, three times the good thing will happen to you, essentially. Uh, not pictured here is another very important Wiccan text, the 13 Principles of Wiccan Belief, uh, which were, was drafted by a group of Wiccans in like the 1970s, so Joe Gardner times. Uh, and it contains, you know, 13 principles of action, belief, uh, morality, kind of, of, of Wiccans. And it's not like anything accepted by all Wiccans, but it's commonly like looked at as an example of an important Wiccan text. It includes stuff like a belief in the power of nature, the responsibility of humans towards that nature, um, a dislike for hierarchical structures uh, of humans, um, and that general kind of thing. It was a very accepting text for its time, uh, and it's important uh, to this day. That's the main fact. <laughs> uh, as for the practices of Wiccans, again, they vary a lot, uh, especially since like the very groups that Wiccanism is practiced in are they differ from group to group. Sometimes it's individual. Uh, and sometimes it's in, like a partner said, a coven, uh, borrowed from old witchcraft terms, like a lot of things from Wicca. Uh, this is in a thing, it's a ritual dagger, it's used in rituals. Uh, covens generally come together, there's a big focus on Wicca and ritual magic performed with some kind of intention, used with natural forces in mind or something. Um, that, Although Wicca has no central religious text, there's kind of an encouragement to make your own central religious text. That's a book of shadows or a grimoire, or there's actually a lot of names for it. And basically, the idea is that a coven or a single witch will write down their practice and their ideas into that book, uh, kind of like a journal um, that you keep for religious purposes. Also, in terms of practices, there are eight Wiccan festivals throughout the year as my partner mentioned, based on old pagan ones, and generally occurring around equinoxes or solstices or between them, uh, especially Samhain. Uh, again, another one. Hmm? Samhain. Samhain? Samhain. Samhain. Samhain, yeah, I know. Huh. I didn't know that, actually. I've only read it. I haven't heard it. So Samhain, the beginning of the Wiccan year, is it falls on modern-day Halloween, actually like a lot of Wiccan holidays because Christianity kind of melding pagan traditions into its own. Big complicated thing. Beginning of the Wiccan year with a spirit world and the this world of ill twin sins. You've probably heard something like that somewhere. There's a lot of historical context to that. Now, with that aside, understanding generally what a modern witch does, I'd like to talk about why there are so many modern witches and exactly what that means. Witch talk. Witches have made a big resurgence in the past couple of years, partially as a result of social media as a whole, partially as a result of, well, a lot of things. A common uh, idea of it is it's a very feminist movement. Witches were persecuted historically as kind of a symbol of female power, and a lot of people are symbolically taking that back by taking to witchcraft in their own way. So. That's part of it. It's also, it's kind of rejection of hierarchy is also a very modern idea and a feminist one at that. So that's part of the reasons that why there are so many modern witches. But what this means is as Wicca enters the mainstream, it has a lot of interesting effects on the culture, both inside and outside of Wicca. There are some witches who are worried about this surgence because it can lead to commodification as Wicca enters the mainstream, there's a lot of people who are, you know about like the, the big crazes of crystals and tarot and manifestation and all that. All that comes from a kind of witchy idea. And crystals especially are a good example of this. A lot of people selling crystals are just trying to like scam people, you understand. It's, it's a very common, the commodification here, the way that people exploit like the beliefs of people, it, it's not unique to Wicca. It's a very common thing, but the newness and the surgence of Wicca is casting kind of a spotlight on it. And also, as it enters the mainstream, there's a lot of new witches who are 
they don't understand as well the history and the culture of Wicca, and a lot of people are worried that might lead to a loss of sacredness in the tradition, and it also might lead to, there's another uh, problem, which is cultural appropriation. A lot of uh, white witches using pagan traditions that they don't have a good understanding of. A good example of which is the Palo Santo tree, which is recently in some danger, it's, its population has been decreasing because a lot of people are selling its wood, uh, even though it was originally just used in like indigenous Peru uh, groups. That's all I have for that. That's our last slide. Oh. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, that was, we have talked to you today about our uh, understanding of Wicca. I hope you have gained some more understanding both of the modern context of Wicca and its history. Um, thank you very much. And I wonder if some of you might be more interested in this religion after today's presentation.